Cool. Pini Hinari. Tina koe te manga o te fari te na tato katoa. If indeed uh, the member who just resumed his seat has talked about time and space, well, it's clear that according to his assertions, he has given a lot of time in going around and meeting these people, uh, and now he's suggesting that he gives them a bit of space, space to fix the wrongdoing that's happened under the watch of his government. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I doubt very much that, in fact, the member has actually toured the entire region of the Southern District Health Board. Um, I guess he, he's probably kept with his own uh, little patch, but just for the advice of the House, Mr Speaker, uh, the estimated resident population is just over 300,000 people of the Southern District Health Board. It's a land area of just over 60,000 square kilometres and uh, considered the largest of the DHB regions in New Zealand. And uh, I doubt very much whether or not the member who just resumed his seat has covered all of that area and canvassed all of those people that the Southern District Health Board are there to serve. Um, Mr Speaker, it's already been mentioned in this House, in this house that not just um, in relation to the Southern District Health Board, but health is a big issue across our country. And I pick up the point of um, the member, Claire Curran, who has already pointed out that all of the people that come into her electorate offices has already, have already mentioned that health is the biggest issue. Most of them that come through, it's either health or housing. H and H, health and housing. And one of the sad things with a bill like this, Mr Speaker, is it'll remove, it'll remove the community's voice in appointing the people to best represent them, in appointing a district health board that will reflect the people who live within the catchment area of the Southern District Health Board. Um, Mr Speaker, it's already been mentioned, and I want to echo the point, that it does seem to be a suspended state of democracy. Now, this isn't something new, given that in recent times, this particular government has put the country through this state several times in my time here in this House, Mr Speaker. Just recently, we've pushed through under urgency a series of legislation that I'm sure the wider population, the people of New Zealand, would relish the opportunity to be able to provide submissions to a select committee. They'd relish the opportunity to have their voice heard on the issues that are affecting them. This is another case of that voice being taken away. But I say to the people of the Southern who fall into the catchment of the Southern District Health Board, do not fear, because while this bill may take away their rights to an election of the District Health Board, there is another important election coming up in 2017, and I hope that their voice is heard. That one will tell this government that what they've done in their time uh, while managing the Southern District Health Board have failed. It will send a clear signal to this government that we cannot tolerate the, the demise and the reduction in services, in particular health services, in our regions. My colleagues have already talked about the hospital, Mr Speaker. They've talked about how the people of Dunedin, the people of Otago, deserve a hospital that is state of the art. They deserve a hospital that provides to them the services that they need to be healthy, to be wealthy, to be wise. They deserve a hospital that will see them when they need to be seen. They deserve a hospital that when they walk in, they do not fear any secondary illnesses that may come because of a poor state of the hospital. They deserve all of these things, Mr Speaker. And it's sad that the state of the Southern District Health Board has fallen this way. It is sad. And it's also sad that this government have ignored this problem for some time now. It has been raised with them by many members, not only, in, uh, not only on this side of the House, but I'm sure a few on that side. But sadly, their cries, their pleas, their corridor, or their statements have been ignored and now we are left here to deal with a serious problem. A problem that has seen the deficit blow out to over nearly $40 million. A problem that has seen millions and millions of dollars poured into this particular health board to make sure that they fall under the $40 million deficit mark. 
That can't be tolerated, Mr. Speaker. We want to see that money goes to the places where it needs to go to. It needs to go to places where our people are able to receive the services uh, that they deserve and the services that they require, Mr. Speaker. So what does this erosion of the de democratic process do? What it does is it erodes the trust the people have in the institutions of this land. In this particular case, it's the Southern District Health Board. In other cases, it also falls down to this august institution, Mr. Speaker, and that's a concern. It's a concern because as we see low levels of participation, low levels of participation across the country in voting, whether it's a silly flag referendum, whether it's the actual uh, general election, we are seeing a drop in numbers. And I ask myself, why is it like this, Mr. Speaker? And clearly, from what I hear when I'm out talking to uh, the people in the good um, constituency of Tāmaki Makaurau, that is because they do not have a faith in the system that he is here to serve them. And we're going to see a repeat of this here in this, on this particular bill by removing the rights, the democratic rights of the people who fall within the catchment of the Southern District Health Board taken away, stripped away until 2019. How many people, I ask Mr Speaker, will suffer between now and then? How many further services will see a drop in funding or potentially be cut between now and then. While we talk about some of the major centres within the Southern District Health Board, Mr Speaker, I wonder what it means for the more remote regions within this particular catchment area of the Southern District Health Board. All of these questions, Mr Speaker, I wonder, can they be solved by one person? Can they be solved by one person who, if we give more power to, can make sure that the people within this area will receive uh, the services they require. Um, I question that, whether or not that person in this particular time frame will be able to tidy up what's happened. We've already come eight years of this particular government and the problem has gotten worse. So there still remains many questions from this side of the House, Mr Speaker. All of this said, we do support the bill that will go forward to the Select Committee and we hope that more and more people uh, from the Southern District Health Board catchment area will make a submission. I note too, um, Mr Speaker, uh, in the uh, departmental disclosure statement, it talks about uh, the cost savings that will happen when you don't have to have an election. And uh, they'll say it's about approximately $300,000 to run an election for, the, uh, for membership on the District Health Board. And I wonder, Mr Speaker, if um, when the time that was supposed to be given to elections, um, the one that's being proposed to be taken away, if at that time this government will say, well, well done, we've saved $300,000. They've saved $300,000 by taking away democratic rights. But in conclusion, Mr Speaker, I want to just repeat what I said earlier. Do not fear because there is another important vote coming up before 2019, that's 2017, and I hope the voices of the people that fall within the Southern District Health Board catchment area make their voice heard, make their voice known, stand up for the rights that they deserve in, uh, with a responsible, a caring health sector that makes sure that their health requirements are met. Kia ora, Mr Speaker.